So I was studying uh, how uh, people interpret sounds in their second language, and I did that in the Netherlands in Nijmegen. Uh, that's a picture I found online. I'm not big on taking pictures, I apologize. But I was at Rotterdam University, and I would go and uh, run participants in a lab rather than going around on the field. And overall, just the entire environment there is really nice, and the city is beautiful, and I had a great time. Uh, straight to the experiment and our ideas. So, second language sounds can sometimes be difficult to perceive, uh, but um, Dutch speakers specifically have trouble differentiating the A sound in bad and the S sound in bed because they're acoustically similar. So, we're wondering if the uh, differences in the way individuals pronounce sounds can affect the ease or difficulty in telling what sound was um, heard. So our entire idea was if the acoustics is what determines the uh, difficulty to perceive, can a shift in acoustics um, make it easier to understand? So we recorded two different people talking and then we manipulated their vowels so that there's an upward talker and a downward talker where their vowels, as in like this bad and that bad, are very acoustically similar. So participants would hear one talker upshifted and the second talker downshifted, or vice versa, so that they'd be hearing very acoustically similar uh, words. So they were presented with the word, and then they saw words. They they were they heard the word, and then they saw two words on the screen, and they would have to press a button. To, to say which word they heard. And then we also used an eye tracker to track their eye movement. Our idea is that if it was easy to determine, they'd go straight to the correct response. If it was hard to determine, then they'd be looking back and forth or have more looks towards the incorrect answer. And we did not fully analyze that yet, my apologies. So, yeah. Uh, based on our results are showing that Regardless of the shift, it's still difficult for Dutch speakers to hear the difference between uh, the sounded bat and the sounded bet. So even upward shifted, uh, uh, and then downward shifted, uh, if we, uh, sorry, forgot to explain this. We used the sounded bet and the sounded bit as uh, a comparison because Dutch has those two sounds. They could very easily hear that difference as opposed to the ad and eh. Sorry, I forgot to say that first. but um. So regardless of the shift, uh, they still had a harder time hearing the difference between a and e. Eh. And I just uh, showed there, like the y-axis is showing the proportion correct based on um, everything. And uh, yeah, so. Um, Overall, we figured out that acoustics is not the determining factor in uh, perceiving these vowels because even after the shift, it was still fairly difficult for them to determine which sound was heard. So there's some more abstract level of language that is determining whether they can hear the difference or not. And real quick, I also uh, met with faculty in Rob into languages to talk about my research my ideas and then like what they thought of it. So overall, um, we thought that having specific exposure to difficult phonetic contrasts would be very helpful in second language teaching. And um, that could be implemented more if there are um, students that cannot hear the difference between certain sounds like that. And uh, yeah.